Hey guys, and welcome back to Signalis. When we last left off, we were looking for some keys. We actually found some keys as well. Now, it's been a good little while since I've played this game because for like the last three days, um, I haven't had any internet. <laughs> you know, oh, hello. Hi, how are you doing? Which has been a little bit problematic. And uh, it's definitely been interrupting my uploads as well. So basically for... How do we... Ah, there we go. For the overwhelming majority... Oh, hi. Of my holiday, or at least a good chunk of my holiday, we haven't had internet. Which sucks. Monkey balls. Pretty bad, but... You know, when you live in a third world country, or at least it feels like that sometimes, that's what you have to deal with. Right. Ah, oh, no space for the hunter key. Ooh. Oh, god damn it. <sighs> really, game? Really? You, you gonna... Okay, that was my fault. <laughs> that was 100% on me not having left any space for the frickin' hunter's key. I mean, come on. Like, uh, Talk about dumb move. Alright, let's just get back through. At least that woman there is still down, which is good. Yeah, so I've been really wanting to play this. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the games at the moment that I'm playing are on Game Pass. I guess we'll drop all of that. Now the problem with everything being on Game Pass is you need an internet connection um, for that. Which is frustrating, but... You know, one day we'll have full fibre, I suppose. Ironically, the house that uh, we moved out of to come here now has full fibre. So, gigabit connections. Yeah. <sighs> And we're still stuck on copper ADSL. Right, let's sneak around. And I wanted to do more of... One second, guys. And sorry about that, guys. Right, where were we? Oh, shit. <laughs> where were we? Right in the lion's den. So now we have the hunter's key. Which is very nice. We should be able to do something with it. Cradle of Humanity. Binta. Okay. Right, let's get out of here. So the hunter's key. Oh, hello. Right, we don't want none of you, love. Let's get out of here. Now, the two keys we have are the Hunter's Key and... Oh, I thought she had an item on her then. And the Island Key, I believe. Now, we know where we can use the Island Key. The Island Key. Uh, oh my god, I forgot. We've got a lot of ammo, haven't we? Thermite, auto-injectors. We've got a lot of stuff in general, actually. Uh, yeah. We're pretty healthy. Weapon. Oh, I forgot about the weapon case. Small padlock. Well. A, sm <laughs> a small padlock. A small padlock key. Well, I wonder. So that gives us the revolver. And an achievement, apparently. Rule of six. A short barreled double action six shot revolver that fires 12 millimeter high power ammo. Am ammo? Ammo? Ammo. High recoil, strong knockback. Well, okay then. Ah, well, I mean, we're obviously not going to be taking that with us because, you know, we don't really have any space to spare. Let's go use up the island key. Seems like a reasonable thing to do right about now. Where was that island room, actually? 
Um, it was. Oh no. No, where was it? Was it in the dining room or the bedroom? Ah, no, that's the first aid room. PC card, elevator shaft. That's the pipes room. Definitely don't want to go in the pipes room. Fuse is done, music player. Where was it? Right. Oh, cool. It's just up here, apparently. That's convenient. Oh, God damn it! We've got one of them. I can't actually remember what those guys are called. What designation they were. But they're the uh, assault droids or whatever. And we definitely don't want any of uh, their nonsense. So, painting of a strange island. Somehow it feels very familiar. Yep, let's use the island key. And that gives us the workshop key. Alright. Workshop on the sixth floor. So this is the seventh floor. Sixth. Right, there we go. There's the workshop hallway. Down there. Alright. Cool, I guess. That makes things nice and easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you guys are supposed to be like calm and collected and chilled out. From what I've seen, that's eight. There's no chill at all with these girls. It's all bludgeoned to death. And uh, crush your face kind of situation. Which is not great, you know, for being honest. <laughs> And we still need a post box key for that. Okay, well, you know, I mean, we'll, we can only work with what we have. Wrong door. Because, of course, it is. Yeah, I'm hoping we're not going to get kicked out of this game. Because, the trouble is, because it's Game Pass, if your internet connection drops out for any amount of time, uh, the game just closes. Which, I get it. You know, it's a subscription service, but it would be nice if, um, you know, same with uh, playing these games on the Xbox, actually. I think, I think they should only have to dial in like every 24 hours or something, because if you really do live somewhere with spotty internet like ours, at times, um... You know, you can't really use it. I, mean, I guess I could, you know, just buy the game. Okay, so what have we got in the... Oh, there's a soldering iron there that's smoking. Get the ammo. Ah, shit. What is our inventory? We got two spare slots. That's nice. Okay. Storch and Star. Replica Known Issues Part 2. Previous experience with these replica models has given us insight into irregularities in their behavior that stem from the original neural patterns used for those units. During, uh, due to the sensitive nature of this information, this document should be destroyed after reading. So, Star. Despite their normally laid-back demeanor, stars have a strong internal hierarchy. Which is important to take into consideration when promoting units to officers. Not promoting a respected unit or promoting a unit low in status can lead to friction within dorms. Stars will occasionally develop in-group rules involving physical punishments. It is recommended to allow some officers to own military weapons such uh, as fetish objects to stabilize their persona. Okay. So there's a bit of a power struggle with these guys. <laughs> with the star units. It's kind of interesting. 
Storch units initially have a short temper. Training them in patience early after deployment is key, as their neural pattern is less stable than other models. Failing to do so may yield an extremely volatile personality prone to cruelty and violence. Oh dear. A common strategy is pairing them closely with an older star unit. Storch's personality stabilizes by showering or bathing. Books on history or mythology work well as fetus objects. So they need to take a nice hot bath at the end of the day. Otherwise they get a little bit angry. <laughs> okay. Hey, nice. Got some 10 milli as well. Oh... An audio tape deck unit wired up to the broadcasting unit. If I had an audio cassette, I could probably have its contents broadcast on the radio. All right, so we need the radio or tape cassettes to put in the radio that we had. That's fine, but we need to repair the tape though. How do we repair the tape? Um. I'm guessing we repair the tape with the duct tape. I mean, that doesn't seem like a great idea to me, but whatever. I guess we'll give it a go. Wrong room. Oh, we need to go back upstairs, don't we? Yeah, okay, so let's go back upstairs, grab the tape and the cellar tape, put the ammo back and have a fiddle. I don't know though, that doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense in my mind. Surely you can't repair a you know, magnetic tape with cellar tape. But I guess, <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Either way, we need to drop this ammo back. Um, right, so we will have adhesive and the broken music set. Surely this isn't going to work. Really? But how? Alright, well... <laughs> Whatever, I guess. Okay. I mean, if it works, it works, right? I guess we could just go down this way. That works, right? Oh. No. No, 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 no. We need to go up. Seven, because yeah, six is up, isn't it? Yeah, of course. How stupid of me. Ow, thank you. Right, now let's go chuck this tape in and see what happens. Is this going to drive the robots mad? Uh... A small radio broadcast unit is set up to broadcast the tape deck's input signal. Ah, I'm pretty okay. Right, so I guess that's just the frequency for us. Maybe we're the only ones that can hear it. All right. So what is on the tape then? Unless we can now kind of like walk around. Is that going to freak the other robots out? No. <laughs> no, it's not. They don't really care about that. Um. Yeah. They don't care at all. So what have we accomplished by doing s this? 
I mean, it's alerting all the robots as soon as we walk in, which makes sense. You know. Or is it, though? Uh, probably going to want to get some extra health items. So we obviously need to do that for some reason. Hmm. Um. What am I forgetting? Radio transmitter, workshop. Vent room, pipes. Nah, we're going too far up, aren't we? Office, study. Oh! The bedroom. Didn't she have... Um... Didn't she have an item that was activated by radio? Or like she was holding a speaker or something. I'm sure it mentioned something about... A radio here. Uh, bullet resistant armor plating. Yes. Alright, well, I mean, it's the only thing I can really think of right now, so let's go pay her a visit. Let's turn that off, just give me a headache. Right, well, she was downstairs, wasn't she? So let's go down. Was it level 8? It was level 8. Uh... Oh yeah, I forgot we got those guys. Right, yeah, she's here. Yes, it's got the speaker on it. A heavy box fashioned to look like an owl. There are small holes at the top looking like a speaker or a microphone. Yes, I remember this because we had to do this before, didn't we? Um, now... Right. Okay. Now she's not going to... Come to life, is she? Hummingbird key. Because if she came to life, that would be a problem right about now. I guess she's not. Okay. Interesting. So, a magnetic keycard with a hummingbird motif. Ah, right, it even tells us, like, where we need to use it. So, the East Suite on the 8th floor. Cool. Alright. Ah. Uh. Okay. Wait, so, that's North, though, isn't it? There's the east hallway there. Ironically, it's like one of the only doors that we haven't actually examined properly. Fine. Now, the only thing that is concerning me at the moment is we don't have any health. That's kind of a big concern right now. Uh... Alright, so we can sneaky sneak. Cool. Ah, and we can get some stun bands. Oh, there's health item here. Sweet. Definitely want the health patch. And there's that. Take the disposable stun rod. Ooh, eagle key. We take the eagle key. There's a lot of stuff here. 
Alright, there is a lot of stuff here. Kilber. So that's the Commando Lieutenant replica. Commando Control Unit Technology Replican Hummingbird. Sixth generation high tech bioresident specialist. Biomechanical with polyurethane shell and bullet resistant armor plating. A marvel of modern technology, the Colbury is the most capable uh, bioresidence unit ever produced. Every projector a uh, commando fork unit is aided by a cadre of Kilby unit ad adjutants, which can amplify her bioresident signals. So bioresidence, I mean, I'm guessing that's like their psycho powers, I guess, as well as produce their own. Despite their, uh, I guess, diminished build, Cobras are one of the most effective protector units. They're not the tall ones, though, are they? Hmm. Able to directly influence the mind of replicas and gestalts. Uh, extract information non-verbally and communicate amongst themselves instantly in the full bandwidth of the senses. The Colby's, uh yeah, closest... Okay, so they basically work on a hive mind. And I guess they influence the other hive mind of their commander. Alright. This whole replica thing is really bizarre in this game. It's really interesting. Like, who's really in control here? Because these replica units seem to be far outstripping the capabilities of the humans. And who's building the replicas? I guess it's the humans, I don't know. So, Colbury's notes. Keep an eye on Adler, he's hiding something from us. There was nothing in his diary, but when I probed his mind, there were memories of an LSTR unit working at Soprinsky. There's no record of that model of replica ever being deployed here. An order for a single unit for some survey work in the mine was briefly considered but no new orders were made due to the commander's sickness hmm commando control unit yep marvel of modern technology have we not just read that one ah replica known issues part one Previous experience with these replica models has given us insight into irregu irregularities in their behavior that stem from the original neural patterns. Yeah, we know that. We've read this. I'm sure we've read this one. Eels uh, tend to form large groups and like to sing and dance. As the original neural pattern for this unit was a ballet dancer. Oh, no, we haven't read this. Persona degradation can be easily prevented in this unit by making sure they have access to music. Through tape players or musical instruments, always place at least one mirror in it. Okay. In a eel's dorm, as they have a strong urge to check their own appearance at regular intervals. Eel's persona, uh, persona, uh, persona stabilizes by keeping a tidy appearance and through regular social interactions. They will often organise in groups of roughly 10 units and give each other themed nicknames. Ara. Even though they may seem like quiet simpletons, do not underestimate Aras. While they may not show it, they judge those who are rude or unkind harshly and will quietly share this judgement with the entire cadre. Aras get along best with eels, who tend to be patient and friendly, and have a talent for reading Aras' expressionless faces. In many facilities, Aras will construct service tunnels uh, accessible only to them, often under floors and in walls. Ah. Unstable units may retreat into these tunnels. It is not recommended to attempt to retrieve them. Yeah, so they're the ones that get up and chase us around, I suppose. Our personalities can best be stabilised by allowing them access to plants to take care of ideally colourful flowers or trees. Yeah, not not so sold on this replica idea. <laughs> it 
doesn't seem to be very smart. Oh, hello. Right, so our radio just came on. That's a problem. Uh, it said like 8... 83? I think that was. Two 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 eight. Two two eight, let's go for some of that. So our diagnostics is we are going a little bit loopy. Two two eight. Let's try that. Oh that's awful. Alright. I guess we just hold here. 249. Yeah, it was 249. Yep. Yeah. Oh my god. And then 237. I guess we're just going to give them this feedback loop. Which is probably just as damaging to them as it is to us. Are we winning, son? I have no idea. Any more? Do we have to change it again? I think we might have to tune it back in again. That's max. Ah. So, ah, 187. There we go. Right, so it doesn't always tell you. That's interesting. Definitely take the shotgun shells. Yeah, they're weird, they are. Not a fan of all that squeaking noise, either. Ah, the postbox key that we can't carry, and ammo that we can't carry. Great. Alright, well... I guess we need to go back to an item box room. Wonderful. Just what we wanted to do. Bugger. We've got these two ladies here as well, which seems to be getting in the way. Yep, get out of here. Okay, so the best way, I reckon, is just going to be going through here. How far? You know what, that's fine. Let's go drop off all our junk. Because we got a lot of junk here. We d uh, oh, we got the eagle key as well that we haven't used, or at least I guess we can still use it somewhere else. Let's drop the shotgun rounds off. Let's drop that off. We we'll keep the repair patch. That gives us two extra slots. Do we even need the gun? I mean, I guess we need the gun, and I guess we need the flashlight as well. Um, all right. Well, what we're gonna do when we come back, we're gonna go grab the postcard key. And the ammo that was in that room. We still got the eagle key as well, which I guess we can use down there. Maybe in the library hallway as well? Possibly? I don't know. We'll find out in the next video. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. And as always, till next time.